Hello, I'm Rhonda True, Nebraska Department of Education, and I am the Competitive Grant Specialist for State Assessments. And I first off want to start by thanking um, the teachers from Grand Island, all of those involved in learning the process of principal assessment design to write these tasks. And now those people who are going to go back in and revise these tasks after receiving um, feedback from experts in the field so that we these tasks are accessible to all students and so that they are free of sensitivity and bias as well as are the highest quality they can be to provide teachers with evidence of what students know and can do in their classrooms. So I'm gonna start by sharing my screen and walking you through the process of how to revise the tasks that uh, teachers, the teachers in Grand Island or you created um, after receiving feedback from the experts in the field. So I'm going to share my screen now and walk you through this process. I do want you to know that in the email you received with this link to this video, you will also receive the link to where the tasks all are housed. It actually is a Google folder. You will receive a Word document that has the step-by-step -step process that I'm going to show you and walk you through. There is a Word document that you could print and have it as you're doing the work, even take notes while you're watching this video, but it will walk you through the steps to review and revise these tasks. And then there's also going to be a, a slide presentation with just a few slides um, on how to um, look for graphics, which include videos, uh, images, possibly graphs, that we can use in a public domain space. In other words, it can't be copyrighted. And so some of your tasks may have some comments on them about, uh, we checked all the graphics to make sure they are can be used in a common space for all people to use uh, without any permissions. And if you have a note that you need to replace your graphic, um, this PowerPoint presentation may help you to figure out, well, how do I know if I can use this graphic or image or not? So um, it will walk you through the, the things that you would be looking for. All right, well, let's get started. And I'm going to share my screen. All right. And so, um, as you see on the screen right now, you would see, uh, you will, the first step would be to go into the folder um, with the link that was provided in the email, and that would take you to this Google folder. And you can see the name of the Google folder at the top is EdCount Additional Formative Tasks. EdCount is the group that organized the experts and is doing the work um, to do the reviews and then put this all together so that these tasks are the highest quality they can be, like I said, accessible to all kids. And then you will use them in Grand Island Public Schools and we will also use them in the Nebraska Formative Assessment Repository that we currently have uh, grades five and eight tasks, four, seven in high school are being developed and almost ready to go in now. And then you will be adding more tasks to that, um, to that space. So I'm gonna start. So once you get into this EdCount formative tasks folder, you actually will click on the grade level of the task you are reviewing. And I'm gonna use first grade for an example. So you would click on the first grade folder, open it up, and then whichever indicator of ta uh, task for that indicator you are assigned, you would open that one up. I'm gonna use 1.6.2a. And the first step would be to go into this folder called task feedback and review all the feedback that was given on this task by the experts. Now there'll be three checklists, review checklists in there. These tasks went through, uh, these tasks, um, the, the, these feedback were given on th for three things. One, accessibility, 
sensitivity and bias. So there'll be a checklist on that. There will also be a checklist on uh, feedback given around the science content. You wanna make sure that's accurate and, and very explicit for kids to be able to see that and understand it. And then the third one is the high quality task screener, which is really uh, modified from the achieve screener on what it takes to make sure these tasks are three dimensional and high quality. So there'll be three, again, three uh, feedback sheets in there, uh, screeners, that there'll be a rating scale with, with comments um, under each of those. So basically, we usually, how we did this this summer, we had teachers do the same process you're doing this summer with those tasks I talked about earlier. We asked them to go through, read the feedback from each of the screen, the three screeners in a very holistic way. So just read it and get the whole idea, all three sheets, just to, just to get a whole picture, whole vision of, of what uh, needs to be refined in the task. Then after you've gotten that big picture and looked at all three pieces, if you have the opportunity to open multiple screens, multiple tabs, I would keep all three of those um, sheets, checklists open, ready to go. If you can print them, great but you'll be referring back to those as you make your edits, okay? So after you've done that holistic look, it's now time to start the next step, which is to start to apply the revisions. So you will actually make your revisions directly into this document that you guys created, task rubric and student exemplars template. You'll just make your revisions directly in there. So I am going to open that now. And you will see here is the task uh, for first grade. And so whatever revisions that um, were given by the experts, for example, it may have said, relook at your KSAs um, and take another look. Not sure that this task is measuring KSA one. So that's what I would do. I would take relook at KSA one, make sure it's measuring that. If it's not, they will probably have given me suggestions or ideas maybe on what to do. If I change any KSAs here, I would need to go back into my design tools, which would in this case would be the task specifications document and look at those KSAs and edit them there as well. So you might make edits in your task, that you're then going to have to make edits back in either the unwrapping tool or the task specifications tool. So don't forget to do that because those design tools are telling people how you created this task and you want them to align. All right, let's say that um, I look at my uh, feedback and I get feedback that prompt one, uh, prompt one, Maybe they think some of the vocabulary or the text in here is written above grade level, it's second or third grade level text. So in other words, that's gonna hinder accessibility. So they, they say some of that, the, the experts direct us or give us some ideas on what to do. So let's say I have to change some wording in here for this prompt. So I would actually change the wording right here within the prompt and then you would make sure you go down to your rubric. And since you changed the prompt, you may need to change your prompt down here, right? So you wanna be careful. This one's, it looks like a dimension description, but if you chose to make your rubric by prompt, if you change something in the prompt up here, you have to come down and change it in the rubric. And then again, always relook at your high quality exemplar response. Here's the prompt. So if you changed it in the task, you edited it, you need to do that here. So always think about three places, maybe even four that you need to look. If I edit something in my task, I need to look at my rubric. Do I need to edit anything there? Do I need to edit anything third in my high quality exemplar response? And then ask yourself, how about my design tools? Did it impact unwrapping? or task specifications. So that's basically the step of revising, is going in and, and applying that feedback. Once you feel you're, you're finished, you've applied the feedback to the task, the rubric, the student exemplar, and any of the design tools, 
you're ready for that last uh, or the next step, which is while you're going, and it's really not a last step, this process is iterative. While you're looking through your task, you may see comments here out to the right side of your task. And it might say something like this graphic here that I'm pointing out with my cursor is not um, open to the public. We can't use it um, the way it is. So you're gonna have to replace it with a graphic that is, uh, does not have copyright issues and that's open, open uh, to the public. And so I talked about that PowerPoint before that has those slides on how you look for resources and graphics. Um, you look for a symbol that tells you if it can be used in the public domain. So if you see any comments about public domain um, in the margins out here, those things will need to be corrected because we cannot use those. Um, it's illegal uh, to use copyrighted images at the district level or even the state level. So please be looking for those and do any edits you need to on those as well. And it's probably best to do that when you're going through prompt by prompt. All right, so we've, we've edited and looked at our copywriting for our graphics. We've done all the editing in the, based from the feedback. We've revised. We find those tasks to get them so all kids can access them. Next step and last step is to go to your Nebraska Science Classroom Assessment Verification of Alignment. So I'm going to go back to my Google Drive. And the last step is this Word document right here, Nebraska Science Classroom Assessment Verification of Alignment. I'm going to open that so you can see it. It's the last step to complete to make sure that you have aligned, you are still aligned to that standard and that indicator after you made all those revisions. And this piece here will be used to create the task administration guide for other educators in Grand Island and across the state to use. They can pick up this task and understand what it is so they can administer the task. A lot of this step will be just copying and pasting. As you can see here, you'll just be uh, reviewing your task scenario and prompts to verify that the content and elements are aligned. You'll just put your grade, you don't need to worry about task number, and then you will just start, what was your standard? Copy and paste that in. What was the indicator? What were your KSAs that this task that you just revised is aligned to? Not all the KSAs in your task specification tool, just the one this task is aligned to. And you can just copy and paste those and put them in. What student demonstration of learning in this task are students asked to do? They're asked to um, model something. They're asked to grab something. Whatever from your task specifications tool, you can go back in there and look and say, okay, what were they asked? What did we ask them to do? You can copy and paste just those into this student demonstration of learning as well as work products. What work products from your task specifications tool did you pluck out to put into this task? So it's not all of them, it's not that palette, it's just the ones for this task. Same with task features and variable features. Might not be all of the variable features, just the ones for this task. And then of course, you can go back to your unwrapping and pull the information from your founding or your foundation boxes, your key aspects and your prior knowledge. So like I said, a lot of copying and pasting, specific to this one task so that we can use this to springboard teachers into delivering this task to their students if they weren't the author or the writer of this task. All right, that is the steps in the process. Like I said, there is a Word document that outlines basically six steps on how to do this, but I wanted to show you in case um, for some of you like me or highly visual, it's easier to see someone walk through it and then I can do it more quickly, maybe more efficiently and effectively. Again, thank you for your time. Thank you for all your work on this um, as a district, as an educator. Um, this assessment literacy that is growing in your district, as well as across the state, and the alignment and coherence we're gonna have from formative to our summative science tasks is gonna be uh, amazing. So again, thank you very much. and. Um, 
I appreciate your time. Thanks.